the city of confusion. With over 7.7 .7 billion people, spread across more than 195 nations, speaking over 6,500 languages. You pretty much can get confused especially, when you live in a city where everyone speaks in various tongues. So what exactly are tongues? How are tongues spoken? And who can speak in tongues? This is facts from fiction, and hear what it means to speak in tongues. According to the Oxford Dictionary, tongues are referred to as a person's style or manner of speaking. A speech, a native language, a dialect, your mother's tongue. You probably know all of these, but before we go into all those details, let's start from the beginning. Many thousands of years ago, the entire world spoke in a single tongue. Whoa, what? That's right, they all spoke in one language, a common speech. Genesis 11. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. Until, they decided to build a city and make a name for themselves. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. This marks great progress in the arts of civilization, not so primitive after all, since they had learned that burning bricks to build, and using tar for cement, would be virtually indestructible. But this was only the beginning of their downfall. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, if there's one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. It's okay if you're still a little bit confused. That is what happens when there are so many languages, and that is why it was called Babel, the city of confusion. But here is something you need to know. Everything Jesus had said needed to be taught to the non-Jewish people. Matthew 28 Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. But in order to do that, his disciples needed help to remember everything he had taught them. John 14 But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, and will remind you of everything I have said to you. John 15 When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. So, how do you teach people that don't understand your language? That is where the Advocate, or Supporter, or Holy Spirit comes in. The purpose is to help them teach. These are how tongues are spoken. Acts 2 When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, 
Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. Did you notice that these men understood what was spoken, and yet they were not filled with the Holy Spirit? They understood the language because it was a language under heaven. Acts 2 We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. So who can speak in tongues? Paul explained. 1 Corinthians 14 Now brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction? Even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds, such as the pipe or harp, how will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? Again, if the trumpet does not sound a clear call, who will get ready for battle? So it is with you. Unless you speak intelligible words with your tongue, how will anyone know what you are saying? You will just be speaking into the air. Yes, there are so many languages in the world, and all of them are meaningful. Undoubtedly, there are all sorts of languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. Let's not forget that the purpose of this gifts was to teach foreigners and not to confuse them. Otherwise, when you are praising God in the Spirit, how can someone else, who is now put in the position of an inquirer, say Amen to your thanksgiving, since they do not know what you are saying? Tongues, then, are a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy, however, is not for unbelievers, but for believers. So if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues, and inquirers or unbelievers come in, will they not say that you are out of your mind? So then speaking in tongues are languages, an earthly language that a person has never heard, read, or been exposed to in any way. Yes, again men spoke in tongues, meaning in another language, but these gifts were given to teach and spread God's word, as it was needed to reach foreigners, the gifts are no longer available as it is no longer necessary, for we now have the complete word of God, the Bible, in virtually every languages, and without the apostles to pass the gifts, no one can receive it. Acts 8 When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them, they had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability, so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Next time you hear your preacher speak in complete nonsense, know he's a false preacher. In fact, there are three vital signs to identify a false preacher, but that's another topic on facts from fiction. He who has an ear, let him hear.